Hello and welcome to the heart of Worcestershire Painting and Decorating Department. This next video presentation is just going to be an introduction to paper hanging tools and equipment. Just a few bits and pieces you will need in order to hang wallpapers. Let's just start off with the bits and pieces we're going to use to mark out the walls before we hang the wallpaper. So first things first, the pencil. Never forget the pencil. Do not write on the walls in pen if you're marking out because the wallpaper paste will draw the ink through and you'll end up with a stain on the front of the paper. So remember, always a pencil. Obviously good old measuring tape. All right, I won't explain what that's used for. And another thing, a very useful piece of equipment, the chalk line. Very useful if you need to mark your wall horizontally. This does need two people, one to hold the uh, chalk line at each end, another to pull the line away from the wall, give it a ping. The chalk line then bounces on the wall, leaving a line of chalk. It's obviously dead straight and easy to follow. For your verticals, a good old fashioned plumb line. Right? It can't go wrong, it's a weight on a piece of string. So once it's stopped moving, you can use your pencil just to mark the pencil line where you're going to hang your paper. And the last piece of kit really for marking out is the spirit level. Obviously very useful for cross lining. That's where we'll need a horizontal line or for our vertical drops. All right? Very useful either way. And then we've got um, the application and the cutting tools. Sharp knives, very useful for trimming in awkward places and can be used in conjunction with a caulking tool. The caulking tool is pressed against the paper and the uh, knife used to trim along. This will be in a demonstration later on. Paper hanging shears. All right. Lots of guys on site will just call these, call these their paper hanging scissors. The technical term is paper hanging shears. A spatula, not to be confused with the caulking tool. This is plastic, it's softer, and can be used for smoothing out air bubbles in flat wallpaper, lining paper, vinyls. Obviously no good for a textured paper, like wood chip or embossed papers. That's where the sweep brush comes in. Again, very useful, called because you are literally sweeping from the center out to the sides of the paper to get rid of any air bubbles that may be there. Once those are on and you've got a butt joint, sometimes it's necessary just to use lightly a seam roller. Again on site, some people will call this a joint roller. It's a seam roller. Ours here at the college have a wooden reel, others have hard rubber, but they do the same thing just for applying a bit of extra pressure to the seam, the butt joint. When it comes to putting the paste on the back of the paper, two methods, right? The paint scuttle with a nine inch roller. This works quite well on site if you've uh, under time pressures. It is a very quick way of applying pa uh, paste to the back of the paper. More traditionally, we have the paste brush. This one just happens to be an old six inch paintbrush. Right? Um, this is a mixed bristle. Uh, some of the paste brushes are pure nylon, but they work just as well either way. The paste bucket, as you'll notice, has a piece of string across it. The reason for that is once we've actually dumped the paste, rather than trying to put the brush on the edge of the bucket and therefore getting paste over our hands, we just put the brush back there when we're not using it, saves us getting our hands covered in paste. And once we've measured and marked out and cut and pasted and hung the paper, the last thing we need is our second bucket with clean water in with a sponge, that way we can clean down everywhere uh, where excess paste may have got, whether it be ceiling edges, skirtings, door frames, and even down the joints themselves. So that is everything you will need to hang wallpaper. 